March 3rd, St. Cundegundes, Empress. St. Cundegundes was the daughter of Siegfried, the first Count of Luxembourg, and Heidswig, his pious wife. They instilled into her, from her cradle, the most tender sentiments of piety, and married her to St. Henry, Duke of Bavaria, who upon the death of the Emperor Otho III was chosen King of the Romans and crowned on the 6th of June in the year 1002. She was crowned at Paderborn on St. Lawrence's Day. In the year 1014, she went with her husband to Rome and received the imperial crown with him from the hands of Pope Benedict VIII. She had, by St. Henry's consent, before her marriage made a vow of virginity. Slanderers afterwards made vile accusations against her, the Holy Empress, to remove the scandal of such a slander, trusting in God to prove her innocence, walked over red-hot plowshares without being hurt. The Emperor condemned his too scrupulous fears and credulity, and from that time they lived in the strictest union of hearts, conspiring to promote in everything God's honor and the advancement of piety. Going to make a retreat once, she fell dangerously ill. She made a vow to found a monastery if she recovered at Coffingen near Cassel in the Diocese of Paderborn, which she executed in a stately manner and gave it to nuns of the Order of St. Benedict. However, before it was finished, St. Henry died in the year 1024. She earnestly recommended his soul to the prayers of others, especially to her nuns. She expressed her long desire of joining them. She had already exhausted her treasures in founding the bishoprics and the monasteries, and in relieving the poor. She had therefore little left now to give. But still thirsting to embrace perfect evangelical poverty and to renounce all to serve God without obstacle, she assembled a great number of prelates to the dedication of her church of Coffingen on the anniversary day of her husband's death in the year 1025. After the gospel was sung at mass, she offered on the altar a piece of the true cross and then putting off her imperial robes clothed herself with a poor habit her hair was cut off and the bishop put on her a veil and a ring as a pledge of her fidelity to her heavenly spouse after she was consecrated to god in religion she seemed entirely to forget that she had been empress and behaved as the last in the house being persuaded that she was so before god she prayed and read much, worked with her hands, and took a singular pleasure in visiting and comforting the sick. Thus she passed the last fifteen years of her life. Her mortifications at length reduced her to a very weak condition and brought on her last sickness. Perceiving that they were preparing a cloth fringed with gold to cover her corpse, after her death she changed color and ordered for it to be taken away. Nor could she be at rest till she was promised she would be buried as a poor religious in her habit. She died on the 3rd of March in the year 1040. Her body was carried to Bamberg and buried near that of her husband. She was solemnly canonized by Innocent III in the year 1200. Detachment of the mind, at least, is needful to those who cannot venture on an effectual renunciation. So likewise every one of you, saith Jesus Christ, that doth not renounce all that he possesseth, cannot be my disciple.